untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Explorer gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Jeskai Artifact Aggro deck featuring a couple new cards from the latest Explorer Anthology expansion. One of them is Ensoul Artifact, a 2 mana enchantment aura, enchanting an artifact, turning it into a 5 5 creature, and that synergizes very nicely with another new addition, Darksteel Citadel, an artifact land that's also indestructible. So we can potentially enchant our Darksteel Citadel with Ensoul Artifact, turning it into a 5 5 that's also indestructible thanks to Citadel. So that's a great combo against a lot of decks and the format. And then a Soul Artifact also synergizes very nicely with a few other creatures in the deck, like maybe an Ornithopter that we can play for free, and then turn to already enchanted to turn it into a 5-5 flyer that can start beating down. We also have a Stone Cold Serpent, which picks up a ton of plus one counters potentially, and then has Reach, Trample, and Protection from Multicolored. So if we put an Ensoul on it, it turns into a 5-5 with additional plus one counters that will also stack nicely. And then more artifact payoffs include Michiko's Reign of Truth, a saga that on the first two chapters will pump one of our creatures equal to the number of artifacts and or enchantments we control, eventually turning into Portrait of Michiko. So once again, Citadel being an artifact also increases our artifact count for Reign of Truth. Could also be playing with All That Glitters as a card that's similar to Reign of Truth, but because the mid-range decks might have a small resurgence thanks to Siege Rhino and Tireless Tracker, for now I'm hedging my bets and playing more creatures instead of All That Glitters, which can be punished by some of those removal spells. And then another great payoff is Steel Overseer, can tap to put a plus one counter on our team, and Patchwork Automaton gets a plus one counter whenever we cast an artifact spell, so also reason to sometimes hold on to Ornithopter until turn two, and then has built-in protection thanks to Ward, so makes it a great target for Reign of Truth or Ensoul Artifact as well. And then at 1 mana we've got Bowman Courier, a 1-1 with haste, that can potentially provide a bit of card advantage every time it attacks, and then we can eventually sacrifice it, discard our hand, and then get all those cards back from exile. So that's a great reason to include a few red sources in our mana base, easy to include a Spire of Industry in an artifact deck, and toss in a few more fast lands, and it becomes pretty trivial to activate Courier, which is a great source of card advantage. And then Ginger Brute, another 1-1 with haste, that can potentially become unblockable if the opponent doesn't have any creatures with haste on their side, and can also be sacrificed for a bit of life in a pinch. And then our utility cards include Portable Hole as our removal spell of choice, as it's also a cheap artifact to synergize with the rest of our deck. Then we've got two copies of Eater Virtue as an equipment, giving two additional power, pretty cheap to play and equip, and also synergizes with a few of the keywords in our deck, like Flying and Haste. And Shadow Spear, another great equipment, giving plus one plus one, trample and lifelink. Very useful after pumping one of our creatures with a Reign of Truth, so it doesn't get chum blocked in case we don't have an Ornithopter or a Stone Cold Serpent to have a bit of evasion. And then the lifelink, of course, very useful in the aggro matchups as well. And then we also get to free roll Gigantha as our companion, can cast it thanks to our Spire or the red sources. Cards I did not include are Ingenious Smith, which I think is just kind of slow, and it doesn't find some of our best cards like Ensoul Artifact and Reign of Truth. And I also didn't include the Black Staff of Waterdeep, which is similar to Ensoul Artifact, but it does require a lot more mana to get going, and also requires a lot of blue mana, and if you look at the mana base, we're not really consistently going to have blue mana early on to activate it, so it's also kind of slow. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play, and our hand looks okay. Question is whether to play Stone Coil on one. Probably fine to just play Shadow Spear instead, and then go Automaton into some larger Stone Coil Serpents. Well, let's see what we're up against. Blue Whites make that a life gain deck. Okay. Play Automaton. Could technically put some counters on it by just casting Stone Cold for zero. Don't think that's going to be worth it here. But it does mean our opponent gets an attack in for one, potentially. Ornithopter's not bad. So... Do I want to equip the Automaton? Play Ornithopter, play, let's say, Stone Cold for one. Or Ginger Brutes. Definitely playing this one. 
And then giving this trample wouldn't be bad. Can start getting some life back. And then could see the argument for Ginger Brutes over Stone Cold as we can play it for X equals 2 or 3 next turn. Although, might actually be better off just playing it for 2 now. And then Automaton has a good attack. And then we're hoping to pick up a Reign of Truth, and Soul Artifact would be okay. Steel Overseer. Have a couple good draws. Hopefully dodge a Resplendent Angel. And the Reach on Stonequill could also come in handy here. It's gonna be the Righteous Valkyrie, getting four. And setting up a ton of life gain in future turns. So that's quite scary. For now, I guess play Stone Cold for four. And then we can attack with Patchwork Automaton. Next turn, give a Trample with Shadow Spear. And then Ginger Brute can also maybe be activated. For mana has collected company range, so that would be quite scary here. It's gonna be another Righteous instead, gaining 8, up to 24. So close to enabling both Speaker and Righteous Valkyrie. And now any Angel is gonna make it really difficult to win this game and Soul Artifact to draw. Probably put it on Ginger Brute as opposed to Dark Sail Citadel, as we can make the Ginger Brutes unblockable basically. Could also put it on Stone Coil to make a 9 9 trample reach. Or maybe the smaller one so both can attack. So we have quite a few options. I guess if I put it on the smaller one, I can still put Shadow Sphere on Automaton and uh, get some good attacks in. Although long-term I could see the advantage of putting it on Ginger Brute instead. But the problem is, if I want to make this unblockable, I wouldn't be able to equip Shadow Spear. So let's maybe try it this way. This would be a 7-7, which they don't have an easy time blocking. And these can all attack. And on the off chance our opponent plays a Skyclave Apparition, also better to diversify our threats a little bit. If they double block my 4 4 Stone Coil, I'm pretty happy. Just to take out a Righteous Valkyrie. Opponent takes it all down to 7, but it's not gonna stay that way for long. Just gotta hope they stay below 27. Jada, essentially gaining 8 here. Alright, get to untap, can put Gigantha in hand, activate Ginger Brutes. Do we need to move our Shadow Spear is the question. I don't think so. So activate Ginger Brutes. This would be the perfect spot for a Reign of Truth. With all these artifacts and enchantments in play. Bishop Chumps. Opponent falls to one. And we'll put a Gigantha in hand. Okay, big turn coming up. Can our opponent enable Righteous Valkyrie? Youthful Valkyrie. It's gonna gain a ton of life here thanks to Jada, up to 13. Do they have an Angel left? Because that would be bad. Even just a 4 6 Youthful Valkyrie is quite threatening, but a Reign of Truth, right on time. So probably targeting the Ginger Brute here. Make it unblockable. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright, super close game here against Angels. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing a Gigantha deck. And our hand seems fine. We've got turn one either Shadow Spear or Stone Coil. And... Uh, I think I prefer Stone Cold for now. Put 
going into red whites and looks like a heroic deck. Ooh, Overseer, a great draw too. Could easily die to a Reckless Rage, but I think we'll make them have it. Alternatively, can play Automaton, wait a turn, and then Portable Hole takes care of Hoplite. And then they need another creature for Reckless Rage to work. But that seems kind of tricky to set up here. So I think highest upsides just go for Overseer. And then ideally pick up a land, go Automaton plus Portable Hole next turn. And yeah, can deal with a Virtuoso. I'll take one. Alright, so... Don't think we want uh, Virtuoso to untap, so let's just get rid of it now. And play a Shadow Spear. I guess we do miss out on quite a few counters from Automaton. So maybe it's still worth it to play, because we also get to put extra counters on it with Overseer. Alright, so this is a bit greedy for a point as a god's willing to protect Virtuoso, so we might regret it. For now, happy to trade Stone Coil. But now I'm less concerned about a Reckless Rage. It's gonna be a Homestead Courage. Doesn't matter how large Virtuoso gets. Portable Hole can always exile it, but a God's Willing protection from white can save it. So ideally we have them tap all their white mana, but our opponent's going to keep up two. Hit us for seven. And they have the Reckless Rage, still keeps up white mana. So if they also have the God's Willing, it's going to be incredibly rough. Since I don't think we're out racing the Virtuoso here. Can only play either Reign of Truth or Portable Hole, so maybe we should just go for Reign of Truth and Shadow Spear instead. And then I guess giving our Automaton Lifelink could help us in the race. Probably should keep Serpent back. And hit for eight. Opponent on taps. Yeah, they probably have a God's Willing in hand, but at least they can give protection from a Colorless to attack past Serpent. So we may be able to chum block and survive here. Arcanists, scary if it gains haste to replay a Reckless Rage. Right, Homestead Courage still keeps up white mana. So if they can give it Trample, we're also dead. But nope. We get to chump. Okay. Target Automaton. And I guess we just give it Trample and play another Reign of Truth. Instead of going for Portable Hole. Which probably gets answered by a God's Willing. And then as the dust settles... I'm not sure where we end up, but uh, I'm curious to find out. Darksteel Citadel also proving to be incredibly valuable, just increasing our artifact count for Reign of Truth. Yeah, 14 Power of Trample. So, deduct 9, still 5 going through, and we probably trade for Virtuoso. Eh, there's a God's Willing, just to maybe give it an extra plus 1 counter. I guess they can just trade for Virtuoso. Okay. So we are out of creatures, although this will transform into Portrait of Michiko. And then now that they wasted their God's Willing, we can Portable Hole the Arcanist, perhaps. So yeah, it turned out to be a pretty interesting game, thanks to Shadow Spear. One card left in hands, and at a healthy 23. 
Alright, Homestead Courage. Their last card. Can be flashed back as well. And then what are they likely to replay? I guess they might want to go for Rampage, which is why they put the counter on Arcanist so it can get back a 2-mana spell. Opponent bottomed the card with a Scry. And yeah, I think we get rid of Arcanist with Portable Hole. We can equip Portraits. And hopefully we can overpower the Legionnaire. But it's going to be close. What if we exile Arcanist instead? Then the Reckless Rage could be a problem. God's Willing, giving protection from white, gets past our Portrait. So I'm not a fan of that. And we have to target a creature here, but that's fine. So we can portable hole. And then I think I prefer equipping over putting Gigantine in hand. As we don't even have the red or green to cast it right now. Okay. Big top deck for our opponents. Alright, we get to untap. They didn't even put Gigant in hand, which is interesting. Just gonna play Automaton and attack. So they must have drawn like a 2 mana spell. Another Rampage, maybe. Put Legionnaire first. Ah, uh -huh, Sejiri Shelter, giving protection from white. That explains that. So we don't get to take out Hoplites. Put Gigantine Hand or equip Portraits. This one's closer. Think put Gigantine Hand now. In case we draw, let's say, the uh, Spire to cast it. Yeah, Sejiri Shelter was a good draw. God's Willing would have done it too, but then we would have seen Gigantha in hand. Anger to trample over. Don't think they're going to go all the way up to 12 here, but uh, the extra counters also help on defense. Opponent passes, and there's our Spire, so we can actually cast Gigantha here. Things I would not have imagined happening in this game. And no attacks for now. So there's a small chance if we play an artifact next turn and equip Automaton, we can attack with all and kill them by having enough attackers. Opponent's gonna pass with a bunch of instants up and a Ginger Brute to draw. Okay, that kind of requires an immediate answer. Don't think I should attack with everyone. I think we just equip Ginger Brutes and make them use a Reckless Rage if they have it, otherwise they go to one. Although, I guess, let's see, this one has haste. So never mind, so our opponent can actually block Ginger Brute. Yeah, I could equip, let's say, Automaton and then attack with all. Or maybe equip Portrait even better, attack with all. But if they have, let's say, Reckless Rage, then this grows, they can kill something. That would be pretty awkward. Equip Portraits. Yeah, what combination of spells would they need to have? Because they once again didn't put Gigantha in hand, so... They need to have several potentially expensive spells. And I don't want to lose Portrait to just a one mana instant here and not present lethal. So I don't think we can actually attack. Need another portable hole perhaps, or I guess another Reign of Truth would do it. Steel Overseer also requires an immediate answer. So that can maybe bait out a Reckless Rage. If 
but I don't think we attack. Alright, there's a Reckless Rage. So yeah, that would have been banned had we attacked last turn. Another Legionnaire. At least they're down to two mana. And an Unsoul Artifact, okay. Where do we put that? I guess on Darksteel Citadel. As opposed to Ginger Brutes, which still gets blocked by the larger Legionnaire. So the question is, do we attack with everyone? The best they can do is kill a Ginger Brute with Reckless Rage, since this has Ward. And yeah, I think we have it here if we attack with everyone. Sweet, close game against the Red-White Heroic deck. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand relies pretty heavily on Steel Overseer to survive. But I'm willing to give it a shot. Don't quite have to play Ornithopter just yet. Probably fine to play a Stone Coil for one. And then next turn we can unload double Ornithopter if we'd like. Although against a red deck, Steel Overseer is not super likely to survive, although picking up a second makes it feel less bad if they answer it. Double red. And they're aiming at our Overseer with a stomp. That's too bad. Well, we could Stone Coil Ginger Brute, but I think we just try again and cross our fingers here. If this is kind of your Ember Cleave red deck, they typically don't have a ton of removal. So, yeah, there we see Emissary. Into a Robber of the Rich. It's not going to find any extra cards right now. And a Foundry Street. Okay. So we'll take two, and we get to untap with our Overseer. And how about a double Ginger Brute to go alongside it? And then... I could leave an Ornithopter back, perhaps. As a blocker, and just send a Ginger Brute and Stone Coil. Burning Tree cannot even block Serpent, so might have to trade for Ginger Brute, and we're happy to take them off. Devotion for Anax and Creature for Ember Cleave. Bonin does accept the trade, so probably means they don't have Torbran in hand, is my guess. Alright, never mind, Torbran. So now Ornithopter still just trades for Denizen, I think that's acceptable. And a Reign of Truth has to be quite powerful here too. So, I think that beats out Stone Coil Serpents. And then I should probably pump a creature like Stone Coil so we can enable an attack on it, as opposed to Ornithopter. That's an 8 8. Can make it 9. 2 in the air. So, if I were to attack with everyone, we don't quite have lethal. So I think we just send Stone Coil, play it safe, and then next turn we should be able to cross the finish line quite easily. As I don't want to die to a random Ember Cleave here. It's going to be another Robber. And an all-out attack, but no mana for Ember Cleave. So... Can uh, double block Torbran if we'd like. And then essentially... Take 8... So even another Stomp would not be enough. And a second Reign of Truth will definitely seal the deal. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a promising start. Turn 1 Courier, turn 2 could already put an Ensoul Artifact on it, depending on the matchup. And the Reign of Truth to go over the top as well. Well, let's see what we're up against. Spire Bluff and an Overseer, probably a better turn to play now. So we don't risk our uh, 
courier getting killed. Expecting Overseer to die instead. Alright, never mind, just an opt. So, blue rats, maybe some sort of Phoenix deck, who knows? Overseer definitely is the type of creature that demands an immediate answer. Alright, we get to untap with it, and Darksteel Citadel would be a nice target for Ensoul. Although here I'm not hitting Stone Cold for 3, so it can also pick up a counter from Overseer. And kind of want to end soul while the opponent's tapped out. Alright, that worked. Move to combat. And next turn we can maybe empty our hand, so Beaumont Courier can refresh it. Alright, it's going to be a fading hope for now to bounce it. Also a great answer to end soul artifact. And a consider. So most likely gonna just go Courier plus a Reign of Truth. Hang on to Ensoul for one more turn. Strangle finally killing Overseer. And a strategic planning, pointing towards a combo deck for sure. And yeah, could fit into a Phoenix deck, helping them put Phoenix in the graveyard. As another strategic planning hits the bin. And double courier plus reign of truth looks great here. Get in for 11. And then we still have the insole on the citadel as kind of the cherry on top. So our opponent's gonna need a lot of spot removal here to survive. Consider step one. Does put an arc light in the graveyard, so that can maybe come back and block. Although we're probably gonna just pump stone coil if we get the chance to trample over it. Play with fire kills Beaumont Courier. And they might have another one. And we can also ensoul the Stone Coil Serpents and turn it into a 9 9 trample, basically. Ooh, a Blitz. Reign of Truth pumps Courier, and then, yeah, let's ensoul our Darksteel Citadel. Force the opponent to chump. And we should still be in decent shape. As next turn we can potentially install the Beaumont Courier. Although could see another Fading Hope to bounce it. Just a Delver, that's fine. So unlikely to see Arclight return here. But now we do have to respect some more interaction. Reign of Truth transforms, and probably want to play another over and soul. Can pump Beaumont Courier, and then we have to decide if it's worth it to sacrifice if they kill it. And I could see just getting two cards and ditching and soul. Alright, opponent's gonna Lightning Axe in response. Yeah, I think we don't need Ensoul. Let's just sacrifice Beaumont Courier. Get two cards and a Shadow Spear. A great way to trample over Delver of Secrets, although I wouldn't be able to equip it just yet. Delver chumps. And this should be the final nail. Just a Charter Course. So best case scenario for the opponent, they discard Phoenix, get two of them back. But even then, we can easily trample over for the win. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the draw. We've got our Steel Overseer as our main payoff at the moment. Yeah, we'll give it a try. Turn one Beaumont Courier is also quite nice with the red mana to potentially sacrifice it. Facing Elvish Mystic, always a scary start. Now, we do have Citadel, so I could end Soul Artifact it, although wouldn't be able to attack. So we can wait on that for a turn. Next turn go Citadel plus Overseer, and then the turn after maybe end Soul Citadel and attack. Opponents on a Stompy deck potentially, could technically be Elves as well. And yeah, turn 2, 5-4, already blocking Beaumont Courier. Not where we want to be. Although maybe an indestructible Darksteel Citadel as a 5-5 five five can hold off some early attacks. Would be happy if Steel Overseer survives. It's going to be a Primal Might to take it out. Yep. So once we make a 5-5 five, five indestructible, the main threat would be our opponent just going wide with Collected Company or finding a Great Henge to take over the late game. But yeah, 5-5 five, five indestructibles, pretty tricky for Mono Green to get past. So we'll pass it back. And then we eventually have a Ginger Brew to get in for some damage, can start growing Automaton. Ooh, Buseju, Horror and Soul Artifact. Well, that's one way to do it, I guess. Yeah, probably a one-off in the Mono Green deck. And probably the only answer in their deck, if we're being honest. So that's a rough one. Down to six we go. And don't see ourselves coming back now. Can play Automaton. Maybe playing Stone Cold for 5 was better, but we'll try this. Once we're empty handed, we can attack with Beaumont Courier to essentially draw two cards. Opponent sends in the team. So they can pump Pack Leader if they spend four mana. Otherwise I could block it with Automaton. Or I could just trade for Steel Leaf. And then could double block Pack Leader. Take five. Although then they just Pump this and trample over for the win. I guess we can triple block to kill this and not take any trample damage. Or we could just chump Lovestruck Beast instead. But yeah, I don't really see us recovering from this. So they do decide to pump Pack Leader. We're at one. And another Lenor Elves is another lethal threat. Yeah, this game I think decided in part due to Buseju. Otherwise I liked sitting behind my Darksteel Citadel for a while. So... Don't think playing Stone Cold for 5 saves us. So play it for maybe X equals 1 attack with Beaumont Courier. Not sure what we can hope to draw. But, uh, yeah, it looks like we're pretty dead here. Steel Overseer plus a land. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And seems keepable if Overseer survives, especially. Up against a red deck. And can play a Citadel. And then probably just a Stone Coil for one. Or I can keep it to maybe play it for X equals three later. 
and just play an Eater of Virtue for now. I might want to play one Ornithopter in case we draw our uh, Ensoul Artifact so we can already enchant Ornithopter and attack for five. But I'll keep the second one in case we draw a Patchwork Automaton to give it extra plus one counters. Okay, Double Mountain. And a Burning Tree Emissary, okay. It's another Red Aggro deck. A reason to play out Double Ornithopter, I guess, would be a Robber of the Rich. Alright, opponent Stomping Ornithopter is great news. So now we don't have to worry as much about Overseer dying, perhaps. So yeah, we'll play it alongside Ornithopter. So we can maybe attack with it next turn. Play Pathway on white. And then we can pretty much empty our hand. Stone Coal also having protection from Burning Tree Emissary could come up. Take two for now. And do we see an Annex perhaps? We do. Alright, Amber Cleave still gonna be a problem. But for now, maybe Stone Coil for one. Plus Reign of Truth. Or we could play Beaumont Courier. Equip it with an Eater of Virtue and send the team. Close call. I think maybe getting the extra board presence going is fine. Since we're not quite killing the opponent in two attacks. And do I keep Ornithopter back on defense or do I send it and get a bit of extra damage in? I'm probably fine to attack. And if Beaumont Courier were to die here, Eater picks up the haste keyword. Opponent takes it. Hopefully they just play a Bone Crusher Giant, but if they have an Ember Cleave or Torbrain, things could get pretty rough. Both attack, can block Burning Tree and take it out. And not enough mana for Ember Cleave here. So a bit of a strange attack. Maybe a second Annex on the way. The yeah, opponent must have missed the protection from Multicolored and concedes. I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems acceptable. Probably gonna hang on to Ornithopter to play after Automaton. Watery Grave untapped for Thoughtseize. Probably takes Overseer. Alright, so... Another Ornithopter joins the fun. It's gonna be one large Automaton at least. Assuming it resolves. And now with Reign of Truth, an extra reason to run out Ornithopter. Now Automaton still dies to Fatal Push for 3 mana. So hopefully that's not the case. And thanks to Ward, it's also a bit of a safer target for Reign of Truth. Opponent cycling Shark Typhoon main phase to maybe hit their land drop. Which they did. Shadow Spear is not bad, but I think we get this going. Hit for 10. And the our opponent needs to answer both Automaton and our target for Reign of Truth. So, kind of skipping that beat to cycle Shark Typhoon to hit our land drop might be enough to win us the game. Opponent lets us untap. And I should probably target an Ornithopter now. Play Automaton, growing the original one. So if they have removal, they can kill the Ornithopter, go to one. But then they're still facing double Automaton. 
Right, Fatal push Ornithopter. And I would rather have them kill Ornithopter than Automaton, which is why we did it this way. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And what do we think of this hand? Yeah, turn one courier, turn two automaton, leads to good things. And we still have a ton of payoff cards we can draw between Steel Overseer, Reign of Truth, and even a Soul Artifact would be great with Dark Steel Citadel. So we'll keep Ornithopter for automaton. And yeah, play one, probably save it for next turn to grow the second one as well. And eventually we can use Spire to make red to sacrifice Courier and refresh our hand. So I'm not too sad about being empty-handed. Right, fatal push kills Courier. Fair enough. Maybe an Abzan mid-range deck. For now, Tomaton into Eater plus Ornithopter. And get a nice attack in. So it's not going to be easy for spot removal to take care of our ward creatures. Eater does not copy ward, but it does potentially carry over flying. Thoughtseize gets rid of portable hole, that's fine. And a Reign of Truth, awesome top deck here. And we can safely target an automaton. And our opponent concedes, yeah, this was going to pump for 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And then we can also equip our Eater Virtue, so that's just lethal here. Alright, we got to see our all-in artifact deck in action. And yeah, it can definitely win some very quick games, thanks to Reign of Truth and, and Soul Artifact, but it has enough payoffs that even if we don't draw those between our Steel Overseer and Patchwork Automaton, we still have plenty of avenues to victory. And Dark Steel Citadel, very helpful not only with Soul Artifact, but also just increasing our artifact count for our various synergies. And then Bomat Courier giving us that late game card draw can also come in handy. So overall, very happy with how this build turned out. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.